we're responsible for introducing songs. Do you want to do that? Or do you want, okay, perfect. You are on song introduction. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, Christ the King. It is so good to be back in Wasika after our mission trip, which we're going to share with you in just a little bit. Uh, first, we'd like to, to welcome Pastor Tom Silver. Thank you for coming today and bringing your lovely life, Darlene. Uh, it is great to have you here at Christ the King. We're going to start out our uh, gathering song, Jesus. If you'd please join along with us. Yeah. 
Good morning. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. Well, I am going to be reading the announcements. I'm going to do the best I can with the tools I have. I've been given a lot of paperwork this morning. So I am praying for grace and love from the congregation here. And But I've been here once. I know it's already here. Let's start with, um, I was given uh, one message here. Please ask the helpers for B VBS to be here tonight at 5.15 to get the information on their assignments. Next, a reminder, we have one 9.30 a.m. service for the remainder of the summer. There will be no more Wednesday services after July 27th. The VBS program is Thursday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m. and all are invited to come. VBS begins today. Discovery on Adventure Island is the theme of our Vacation Bible School this year and will run from July 31st to Thursday, August 4th, 6 to 8 p.m. The last one is probably the most important, and that is the Lady Spam Tour and Lunch on August 13th, 2022. I am still of that age that I remember my spam, so it sounds like a good time. I hope you all can make it. Let's stand up and share a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace. Our mission trip goers uh, come up. And I don't think there I am on. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about what we've been doing this last week. Um, these kids are awesome and they're amazing. And you should be very proud. Uh, they represented Christ the King very well. Uh, we had a great trip. And I threw together a couple pictures, uh, slides, so we can kind of explain our trip a little bit to you. And we'll try to be brief so we can continue on. So uh, first off, where is my notebook that says who's next? Awesome. Like, you're in charge. I like it. So who's up? Uh, we have where we're going. And Emma and Kaya is going to talk a little bit about where we, we went, the two shy ones. Okay, here we go. Okay, over the past week, our TFC group went to Pittsburgh and I'm gonna restart. And we went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, it was about a 14-hour drive to get there. We went through the group mission trips program. That's awesome. Okay, we're gonna move on to why do we serve? So we went to serve because um, people have served in our community as well. Like I did, I went and helped with VBS, and I know there were, there were teen leaders that helped when we were kids, and so we went and did that too. And we helped serve um, the people that were working at the place we were staying by cleaning up after ourselves and stuff and doing chores. And we also served by uh, helping people grow, I guess. That's awesome. And we've got a couple pictures of some of the sites that we saw and places that we were. This is downtown Pittsburgh, and we found a, a place to take a picture. And here, do you want to explain a little bit of this? Um, yeah, so in this picture on the right, we're playing nine square. There was a bunch of that pretty much literally every day. Like in our free time, we played, played nine square. Um, 
and then on the picture on the left, we're Ashton and Kaya and Cameron are helping with dinner or whatever. Breakfast. breakfast. They were making breakfast, and we had. Oh, we had certain times that we did that too. Next. Uh, we had, so this is the building we stayed in all week. Um, it was a little rough, the accommodations, but we were there to serve, so it wasn't supposed to be all that great. Um, look at our little van in the corner. Anyways. Um, what else were our four points? Um, go for it. We're not there yet. So, um, this golden plunger, this is the golden plunger that we got that's for doing the most um, work around the building, hospitality tasks, and just helping clean up the building. Um, we also went to the Ark Encounter on our way home from Pittsburgh. This is in Kentucky. And um, we walked through this big Ark. Um, and just got to see, like, experience. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it wasn't, like, obviously the Bible doesn't say exactly what the ark looked like, how the animals were stored, all that, but this is kind of like a replica of what they could come up with, given the information that they had. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the people that we served and where we were at. This is at World Vision. Ashton? So we, well, some of us, me, Emma, John, and Trey for two days served at World Vision. So we mainly packaged like clothing, like shirts and socks. There were some like sheets and towels and we packaged like all these boxes and they will be shipped out overseas, right? To people who are in need of clothing. Awesome, and we also served at Tree of Life. <laughs> so, um, this is me, Alex, and Christy went to Tree of Life, and it's kind of like the um, neighborhood service center in town. They get donations from just like their community, and then they go through it and they sort it into these boxes by like size and gender and then like seasonal. And they um, put it out into like a storefront kind of a thing, and they actually give the clothes away for free to people in their community that need clothing. They also have a food shelf. Um, they call it their food pantry. Um, there's people in their community that come, I think, twice a month, they said, and get um, groceries, so like cold, gro like refrigerated groceries and non-perishable items. Plus they get um, toiletries, and then they can come into the clothing store. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah. So we actually had an encounter with a lady that came in. She was six or seven months out of a job. She hadn't had like cold refrigerated groceries for a few months. She was on her last bag of dog food for her dog. She had just nowhere to stay, living out of her car. She just needed some help. So we got the pleasure of helping her. Excellent. We also had uh, Kaya somehow avoided a picture all week. So we have no pictures of Kaya besides group pictures. <laughs> but Ethan, will you tell us a little bit about how you helped out at VBS? So VBS was a four hour camp that went from like 10 to 2 p.m. And um, it was a lot of sports and crafts. And then in the middle between about lunchtime, there's a lot of videos about Jesus and learning about him. And we played some soccer, hockey, football, and basketball, just some skills, and then we played some games and just had a lot of fun. Um, Do you have anything to add, Kaya? We worshiped and we taught the kids more about God. A lot of worship. Awesome. And Trey got to spend a day at Cribs for Kids. Trey, can you tell us just a little bit about you guys, what you guys are doing there? So Cribs for Kids basically um, filled packs of clothes and stuff for um, families in the area that had newborn kids that couldn't really afford stuff for their kids. And it gave guides on how to take care of their babies. That is awesome, that is awesome. So we're just gonna wrap up here and, and thank you for, for all that we've done, but we also have a, a thought. Ashton, do you wanna share? So moving forward after spending a week 
serving in their community. We were pretty inspired to bring the mission to us, and we want to start in future serv doing service projects in our own community. So we would like to invite the congregation to help in future service projects that we come up with for our own communities. Excellent. Thank you. And we'll be talking to council to figure out how that can work in our church. So, Christy, do you have any last words? Yeah. So as a group, we would like to say thank you to all of you guys for our help fundraising, raising money to be able to go on this trip. Um, we just want to thank you for all the support and all of the um, helping hands that you guys gave us. Thank you for letting us go on this mission trip and helping fund it so we could all go and have fun. Yeah, thanks for the donations that allowed us to go on this mission trip and help people. We served you guys food and you served us letting us go on this mission trip. <laughs> thank you for letting us... Oh, thank you for letting us serve and giving us the opportunity. Thanks for funding us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. And I just have one more. Okay, and Chris. I just have one more. I would like to invite all of our incoming seventh graders to join us at TFC on Sunday nights from 7 to 8. We won't meet this week tonight because of Vacation Bible School. Most of our youth will be helping with Vacation Bible School. But starting next week, August 7th, we would love to have you guys join us, get to know these amazing kids, um, and just have fun and enjoy the Bible studies and the games that we play. Thank you, and we'll turn it back over to Pastor Tom. Let's please stand for the opening song.
Let us reflect and use some self-examination as we do the confession song. sacrifice for our sins. By his word and by his promise, I declare therefore to you the forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
almighty, eternal God, kindness is far more than we desire or deserve. Generously pour out your mercy to forgive where our conscience is afraid and to provide that for which by ourselves we do not even presume to pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In our first lesson today, the teacher proclaimed his disdain for that which he worked so hard because he had to leave it for the next person who came along. There was no time to enjoy it. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, 12 through 14, and chapter 2, 18 through 26. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the sons of men to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me, and who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet he will be master for all which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes a man who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by a man who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and strain with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of pain and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his mind does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and heaping only to give to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and a striving after the wind. This ends the first lesson. Our responsive psalm today is 100. It's found on page 263 in your green hymnal. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. The Psalm of the Lord. In our second lesson today, St. Paul continued to encourage his friends in Colossae urging them to set their minds on the things of Christ who raised them. He called them to put to death that which was within them that was earthly. Those were the ways of their old life, but their new life is in Christ who is all in all. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. If then you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. 
when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you once walked when you lived in them, but now put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and foul talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old nature with its practices and have put on the new nature, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but Christ is all and in all. This ends the second lesson. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 13 through 21. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the multitude said to him, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said to him, Take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, Ah, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared, though, where, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And if we could have the children come forward. is a great idea. We will be bringing this back to many churches, this idea right here. Well, good morning. Good morning, <laughs> good morning children. <laughs> Thank you for coming up here today. Um, I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Okay, and here it is. Who's ever heard of Jesus? Raise your hand. All right, very good, very good. Do you know him because, let's see, does he play for the Minnesota Vikings? No? no? Hmm, how about the Minnesota Twins? No? No? That might be Jesus from Cuba, but not Jesus that we're talking about. <laughs> what about the Timberwolves or the Wild? Does Jesus play for those guys? No. Well, how do you know Jesus? Who, who is he? Tell, tell me what you know about Jesus. Anybody? Yes. He's God's son. Very good. He died on the cross. This is good. What else? What else do we know? Or do you know about Jesus? Anybody? Anybody? Yes. Did you want to say? No. No. Okay, what do you know about Jesus? All right, well, we know a lot. We're going to talk today in our sermon for the adults just how special Jesus is. You know, we, we have life in Jesus, but we want to talk about from this very special letter today from Paul's letter to the Colossians, 
who is this Jesus? How is he different? One thing I do know that's very important, and this is what Jesus said. First of all, Jesus never lied. Have you ever told a lie? I have. And, but I can ask Jesus for forgiveness and he will forgive me. But one thing, so he, he can't tell a lie. And what he does tell us is this, that I will never leave you or forget about you. Isn't that great? I mean, think about it. Of all the people, he will never leave us and will never forget about us. And I think that's pretty special because he never lies. He always tells the truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you loved us so much that you would send your only son to come down and to bridge the gap or to take care of the problem that we had coming back to you. Jesus said, it is finished, and he accomplished this for us. So we are so happy, Lord, that, that we can pray to you this way or we can talk to you during the day, and we know you hear us. Watch over us, Lord. Watch over us today. Watch over the crops of the field. Watch over our moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. And we just pray this all in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Come and get your treat. <laughs> Do you get one of these then too? Do you? Okay. You guys probably want this. Huh? <laughs> Here you go. And you know, because I'm here today, you can have two treats. <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't lie, but just don't tell anybody. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> two. <laughs> anybody else want these? Here you go. And please join us in our sermon song, I Will Follow. Follow. There you go, and some candy. Here you go, sweetie. Would you like a blood? There you go. Mom, do you want some? <laughs>
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's sermon, I want to talk about, uh, or talk from Paul's remarkable letter to the Colossians. It is one of those little letters, in fact, it's the smallest epistle written, that just tells us so much about who this Jesus is. But first, what I'd like to do is begin with a story. Some years back, I was invited to speak at a Lutheran church in a small southern Minnesota town. They'd invited my wife Darlene and I to come down and talk about um, our inner city mission church, Holy Trinity Mission Church, and the outreach we do in um, what's called the Phillips neighborhood of South Minneapolis. And we've been down there for uh, about 20 years now doing that. After the service, um, they had their, uh, I don't know if it was monthly or quarterly potluck dinner, and invited Darlene and I. And, and this was awesome because at one time there was a strong German Lutheran church and then a strong Scandahoovian Lutheran church uh, in, the, in that area and they, they merged together. And so you have this German and Scandahoovian food and, and, and the, the, let's say the older people, even older than me, were competing for the best food. So it was awesome and it was packed. It was, a, it was a great experience. After the meal, um, in talking with the pastor, who I am just so happy to say was a Bible-believing man of God, filled me in on his congregation's current angst. They were um, beginning to make that decision whether or not they should leave the ELCA. And... Uh, I know <clears throat> most of the people here have gone through that. We've all gone through that. And how much anguish that is from family members and all that. And they were going through this. He had told me the, the, the straw on the camel's back for him was he and a group of pastors were attending a meeting where from their district or region, the, the, the bishop, whatever title that bishop had for that area was he the district I don't know but he was he told me that there was this contentious argument that occurred one of the pastors came up and said but we all know that Jesus is the way the truth in the life and we can only come to the father through him and this just caused a big uproar and um, after the meeting the pa the bishop then thought he should send a letter out explaining where they stand on this issue. And he shared the letter with me. And he said, uh, it, well, anyway, the letter came out, and it, it, the crux of it went like this, that we know that for us Christians, we come to God through the saving work of Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb. We don't make any contention about that. But Muslims... They get to God by following the Quran and following the rules therein. And so it is with the Hindu and the Buddhist and everybody else. As long as they're true, as long as they're true to their following, they will make it up the mountain, per se. It was the straw on the camel's back for this congregation. I, I was, you know, I guess I wasn't totally surprised but again, it's, it's, I don't get it. Because we ask ourselves, how could this happen? 30 years, 35 years ago, and those for us who are a little older, that wasn't that long ago for us. It didn't matter which denomination you belonged to. You could be pretty sure that the person standing in the pulpit, the pastor preaching the word, was preaching from the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You just knew that. I was growing up that way, we just knew it. We knew these, these men that were in the pulpit and we knew what they felt. But here we are today. And not so much, at least in our biggest denomination, 
Instead, these pulpits are filled with, and I, and I just, I, I say this in love, but with false shepherds, with charlatans, with maybe even heretics. I bring this up this morning, not to bum everybody else, because we know who we belong to, but because I wanted to set the stage for the church at Coloss, the Colossian church. The gospel was being preached, people were surrendering to the Lord, and then slowly but surely, evil broke into the congregation, gained momentum, fear began to creep back in, causing some to even question the truth of God of the gospel and return to their old ways and their old idols. It's times like these when we might get caught up in it, but it's times like these when things look so bleak that the scripture speaks to us with assurance. In the old days, we'd say, nihil sub sole novum, for you Latin guys out there. There's nothing new under the sun. Or a better translation is there is, no, there is nothing truly novel in existence. And why? Because God is in control and Jesus Christ is on the throne. Kalash, we don't know much about it. It's one of the only towns of the New Testament era that hasn't been excavated very much. It's an agrarian town located in what we would call in western modern-day Turkey, about 120 miles east of Ephesus, 11 miles southeast of Laodicea. But like our country, at that time, it was very, very religiously pluralistic. There was a mixture of Roman and Greek god and goddesses, along with Egyptian deities, topped off with a Jewish folk religion with angel worship. Now, we might say today, well, we don't have these things. Yeah, we do. It's called different names, but we have a lot of this kind of religion in our country right now. We remember the big craze on angel worship and praying to your angel and all this just 10, 15 years ago. Nothing new under the sun. However, for this town in the middle 50s AD, a new light began to shine. As the gospel began to break through, the Apostle Paul, though he most likely never visited the Colossians or plant that church, he was preaching and doing mission work in Ephesus. And among the crowd listening and learning were some of the citizens from the town of Coloss. Epaphras was the man who discipled under Paul and brought, brought the gospel back. There was another name, another name that we know there, uh, a slave owner by the name of Philemon, who Paul had a little letter written to later on about Onesimus, as you remember. The letter comes about because Paul had been alerted to the fact, most likely by Epaphras, that a new charismatic shaman, shaman type leader had infiltrated their congregation and bringing in all sorts of new stuff, new ceremonies, new ways of worshiping, a better way of worshiping, of praying to the angels for the problems you were have, speaking against the gospel. His truth was being handed down. It was a special truth that he was getting from the supernatural. Therefore, how can a mortal like Jesus of Nazareth outdo that? And people, the Colossian church, began to see some of their members falling back to their old ways and agreeing with this person. So Paul wrote in the book, uh, in Colossians, one of the most beautiful, what we call Christological, or where we get a lot of doctrine from who Jesus is, wrote this beautiful part in, in uh, Colossians, one of my favorite parts of Scripture. We believe he had taken a hymn that the early church was saying. And anyway, part of it was, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. 
in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For he, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. He, Jesus, is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. What Paul was trying to say, it's funny, not funny, but as you follow the history of this, you know, um, you know as, as a teacher, you know, you can, we talk about some of the history of this. And when Paul told the Galatians, one of his very first letters, that they had started to fall away, you know, why do you go back? Why do you go back? These people that are talking to you about circumcision, they should have their, you know, everything circumcised on them. He was pretty blunt. But here he is, most likely in prison in Rome, probably in prison for the last time, writing in love to these people, saying, look, don't be afraid. People will fall away. Some people will. But you don't have to be afraid because you know who he is. This is who he is. He points out they have the truth. As saints, the Colossians had received the true gospel, and they now know the grace of God in truth. You have the truth. God does not lie. He has told you the truth. Therefore, we have been transferred into the kingdom of light. The Greek word that is used here, sometimes in our NIV translation, it talks about we have been brought into the new kingdom. But brought really isn't a strong enough word. ESV, King James probably, talks about being transferred. Paul specifically uses this Greek word, and it's like back in the olden days, back when Assyria would capture, let's say, the northern kingdom, on purpose they would pick up a group of people and move them into the midst of them, and then they would take them and move them out. It is a way to assimilate or to make one people. These people will not be, we'll water them down. We do it in this country. We've been doing it for a long time in this country. You know, our eyes are open. We have wisdom. We can see what's going on. But we don't have to fear. We know he's in charge. So, Colossians, you do not need to be afraid. You have the truth, and you have the truth because you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Paul goes on to tell them that he, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. It's tough for us. It's tough for us to get our heads around the whole idea of this trinity, you know, three gods, three specific persons, one God, the same. It's very hard for us to wrap our mind around that. Even as theologians, it's tough. One theologian, uh, a, a, a great godly man, said it this way, it is very hard for us to understand that trinity, how it works. But unfortunately, this is the way God's chosen to reveal himself to us. So we go with it. We trust him. Sometimes there's a mystery involved, isn't there? But Christ, Jesus, the Son, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, the same God, but three different persons. So why was Paul making this emphasis, do we think? Well, Scripture answers this for us. The Colossian heresy, or one of them, which is still around today, was, was the beginning of what we call Gnosticism. Gnosticism, this special knowledge. I have a special knowledge. I have a secret knowledge. And that is something that's been going on for a long time. New Age, that would be one of those kind of situations. And the reason 
People believe in knowledge. Human knowledge or reason cannot comprehend God the Father. Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit are the same God. It doesn't make sense to us humanly. Well, what happened? Another heresy comes out where we can worship angels. And this kind of came from this Jewish folklore. We don't want to believe in Jesus as God's son, but we believe in the supernatural. We will call on the angels to help us. Some of the things they have found are these amulets with the, the prayers to the angels. Something that went on in, in the church way into the Middle Ages, that we can pray to these certain things and they will deliver us. We have one mediator. We have one priest between us and the Father, and that is Jesus. We go to Jesus. Paul continues to the church, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or heavens or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Paul wrote, this is Jesus who was there at the creation. He is eternal. All things were created by him and for him. Things you see, things you can't see, things that have power and authority and dominion. Yes, Jesus was with God. Jesus is God. They even, he even created these angels. The book of Hebrews tells us, let all God's angels worship him. Jesus. He goes on to say, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. This is the care of Jesus. He is more than just a carpenter's son, more than just the son of Mary and Joseph. Jesus was more than a good prophet from Nazareth who walked and taught and did miraculous things. God's son from the beginning, eternal. He is the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. Paul writes this so these people would understand that Jesus is far above and superior to any angels. You don't need to go to angels. Angels in the last day, he writes to the Philippians, just another beautiful thing, that in that last day, all knees will bow in heaven and on earth below the earth. All knees will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Every creature, visible and invisible. The good news is, you and I, we're going to bow voluntarily, but many are going to be forced to bow to the Son, the Creator. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Paul reminds the church that no angel has promised them redemption, no ruler has promised redemption or the forgiveness of sins, but it is Christ the Creator who did. God the Heavenly Father promised redemption and provided it through his Son, the message that we can never hear enough. We need to hear it. We need to hear how much he loves us. It's the greatest miracle of miracles that we are saved. By Christ, we have redemption. By his word, his promise, his love, his sacrifice, his death, his blood for us. Christ, the king of creation, has rescued us. And he has redeemed us in this time, now and forever. Again, the Colossians were beginning to pull away from the gospel and worship the angels returning to their former ways. Paul then emphasizes then this Christ is the image of the invisible God, that he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Um, a long time ago, when I was young, do any of you out there remember listening on the radio and KTIS was probably a baby at that time, and there was a radio station, Chuck Smith from Calvary Chapel. Anybody remember him? I do. He was one of my favorites. You know, uh, Bible-believing Pentecostal, on fire. But he just gave great, great, great sermons. And he talked about, again, 
the Greek, when he talked about he holds all things together. He said, think of it, you know, an atomic structure with uh, the nuclei and the protons and the electrons and stuff smaller than that that we're just learning about, that Jesus' word holds us together, his word. We say his word is efficacious. When Jesus says, when God says, Jesus says, let there be light, there is light. Let there be mountains, there are mountains. I forgive you, you're forgiven. I have to remind this to people in counseling all the time. God said you're forgiven. Why are you calling God a liar and saying he doesn't forgive you? You are forgiven. He holds all things together. The supremacy of Christ is important. Paul says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. He did not want the Colossians to misunderstand the truth. God the Father, God the Son are one God. Not one person, two different people, one God. We're not really told how God's fullness dwelt in Christ. We don't know for sure. Paul doesn't explain this for the believers. But Paul wanted them to realize Christ, God, Spirit were one. The miracles that Christ did on earth were really the miracles of God. The words that Jesus spoke were the words of God. The love that Jesus revealed on earth was the love of God. And the fullness dwells in Christ. This man, the son of Mary and Joseph, also the son of God. Fully man, fully God. The text, this fullness dwells in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things. To reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through blood shed on the cross. Paul makes it a point to let these people know, look, if you're not going to follow the Lord that you've accepted, know who you are following. You're following something that's secondary. It's not primary. The problem is human knowledge falls short. It can't reconcile. But God's Son has done this. He has made peace. He has made peace with God. He has destroyed the wall of hostility. Jesus has torn the curtain and brought mankind into the presence of God the Father. And he has done this as Creator King. And if the believers did not understand that by now, Certainly, Satan maybe had hardened their eyes in their hearts. Christ is the head of the body of the church on earth, and also he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. As firstborn among the dead, Jesus is the one who rose back to life from the dead. Some people confuse that scripture. <clears throat> Some, like the Jehovah Witness, would say, well, see, he was created. No, he created. He is preeminent because in this new life that he created for all of us, as he left the glory of his throne and was born in humility into Mary through the Holy Spirit, he suffered and died to bring us back to God. God gets the credit for that. Human beings don't, but we want the credit. That's our old nature. We want to have, we want to be able to say, God did his part, now we do our part. It's the one thing I talk to more people about. Walking the dog yesterday, and I had a guy say, well, I grew up Lutheran, but then I found the Lord. <laughs> Wrong guy to be talking to. <laughs> I said, you're just a bad Christian Lutheran, is what you were. I said, and as we talked about it, I said, so, so God does his part, now you do your part. Well, no, not really. No, not at all. We would never choose God. But in our human nature, we still think we got to play some part. We got to have something in this deal. And the Lord just says, accept it. Accept this gift from me. Just accept it. God is in control. God is in control. 
I could go on with this all day long, but I'm going to start to pull her in right now. I can see my wife giving me that clock look. <laughs> Poor her at home. <laughs> The Lord loves us so much. A lot of times we forget. We hear John 3, 16. How God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who would believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. But we should always listen to 3, 17 with that. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world, that the world would know him and love his gift and accept that gift. And that would please God so much. But we are so stubborn, aren't we? I know I am. I know I am. I see a lot of people, you know, they're just happy to get into church. I've accepted the Lord, now I'm there. And I just wanted to get in. Remember that line? I just want to get in. And then they get in for a little while, and now they're telling, now they're pointing their fingers saying, those people aren't good enough to get in. We start getting good, and then we start the judging. So again... My point this morning is this. On the bulletin is your life is hidden with Christ in God. We have to understand and we have to be able to tell other people, our relatives, our family, our coworkers. Now, here's who Jesus is. And how do we know that? Because we believe his word, his inspired, inerrant, infallible word. And this is what the word says about the Lord and how God has rescued us. So that would be it. I am a big fan. I, I, I recommend, or I commend the book of Colossians to you again. Read it through. Read it through in one sitting, knowing a little bit of that history, you know. Um, that history so much that when Paul wrote to Philemon about Onesimus, um, I mean, most people here would say, yeah, I think he probably set Onesimus free after that letter came in. So again, it is, it is a beautiful letter of telling us who Jesus is and then who we are in him. Amen? May the peace which passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Would you please stand as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now sing the doxology as the offering is brought up. Let us pray. Lord, we often take you for granted and lose our focus on you in the busyness of everyday living. We thank you for your spirit who constantly corrects us and brings us back into you, our center of being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, our refuge and shelter, keep safe all those who travel 
protect your people from storms and wind, and bring them safely to their destinations. May we all travel the journey of life with good courage, knowing that you lead and guide us. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, you dwell in glory beyond our understanding. We thank you that your existence does not depend upon us, but rather that we depend upon you for all things, even our very lives. We pray for those who are unsure or doubt their faith and for those who question their own self-worth and value in your eyes. Help us to speak out for what is right and to share your spirit with all those who need an extra measure of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God and Father, your son stooped to heal the needs of those who were wounded and weary. Fill with joy the hearts of all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially for the family of Jamie Mariner, Linda Herska, Carrie Dahl, and the Benzi family. Turn their sorrow into joy, their suffering into health, and their cries for help into shouts of praise. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.